Okay, today on the bench we have not so much the radio, we're talking about the frequency counter here. Um, customer had sent this radio and have, have some work done to it, basically restore. Um, he had done some work to it, started the cap job and decided not to, um, but he did install the frequency counter. So this is one of those, eh, <laughs> to be polite, junk frequency counters. Uh, it's a Ranger frequency, actually this one's what, Texas Ranger, but it's it's made by RCI, I mean, Whatever the name may be on it, they're all made by RCI. Uh, basically the same little modules that they use in a lot of their radios. Um, and these things do tend to drift a little bit just by design. And they also tend to self-destruct. <laughs> You'll see a lot of these things. Um, parts over here just burned up because of poor power management. Um, but I thought I'd show this uh, problem because I've... Her, I've personally never run into this because I've only ever installed a couple of these on on radios, um, and usually I don't think I've ever had a problem with them not being able to get calibrated into on frequency. So this radio over here is set to channel 19, and as you can see, the frequency kind of granted it's upside down, but it reads 27.1829, um, and no amount of adjusting is going of down here so you can see it of that little trimmer capacitor right there is going to change it well, I mean it changes the display but I cannot get it up high enough in frequency or you know I can't adjust that to where the frequency will go up to 27.185 um, normally you wouldn't have to take the board out you just have to crack the case apart you know, the little plastic box that it's in and then through the metal shield once you open you know open your little take it out of the plastic box there. Uh, when you look at look at these, you'll see this little metal box in there. This hole right here lines up with that trimmer capacitor, so normally that's what you do. You just adjust through that hole there until that frequency displayed whatever channel that you're on. Now I know the frequency coming out of this radio is right for this radio, because the transceiver alignment has already been done on it. So I need to make this frequency counter read properly. Like I say, problem is I've gone full range on that 20 picofarad trimmer capacitor, and yeah, no luck. <laughs> so, you've got two choices here. Um, if you take a look at the schematic here, you can take... Uh, where in the heck are we in the view here? You can see right here is our, our reference oscillator circuit. It's what a 4 point... got to pull it back here and look at it. I think it's 4 or 4.5. It's a 4.5 megahertz crystal oscillator circuit, okay? And right there is our 20 picofarad trimmer capacitor. You can see there's another capacitor over here on, on this side. There's a 1 meg resistor across the, the crystal. And then you can see there's another capacitor here, but there's no value given. There's just an X. So this trimmer capacitor, and, and if there was something here, because in this counter, that's just an empty refocus. There's just an empty spot right there. There's two pads with nothing on it. So what we can do is, because remember, capacitance adds in parallel, so it's basically the opposite of resistors. So the more capacitance you put in parallel, that'll all add together for a sum total. So uh, playing around with this, if we, I found that if I increase the capacitance, that changes the oscillator frequency, the crystal's right on the other side of the board here, with those two solder connections and it's laying over, and I'll show that here in a second. But if I increase the capacitance, that will, I can get the frequency counter to where it will read correctly. So you have two choices to, to, to fix this. And I just wanted to show what you have to do. You can, for starters, just add some parallel capacitance here. There's, like I say, there's two solder pads on the board for a capacitor. It's just they have an X here. Kind of, I guess they do that at the factory as long as when they, <laughs> so somewhat, I guess you could say, align these at the factory. Um, if they don't need a cap there, they don't stick one there. They can't get it into range because all these capacitors are doing, these crystals aren't going to be perfect. So you need, they need to be adjustable. And they're doing that with, like I say, with these caps and this trimmer. Um, apparently they didn't need it in this one, so there is none. And they, a lot of times you'll see on schematics, they'll put an X or an asterisk by a part. Now, this does not, this schematic does not have a legend anywhere that says what an X or an asterisk is. But usually, that would either mean optional, or it could also mean, uh, 
picked at factory or picked at time of alignment or something like that if you're looking at a radio. Uh, so like I say, we need to add capacitance. So you could do one of two things. Add, add a capacitor here or you could replace the trimmer capacitor. If you replace the trimmer capacitor with a higher capacitance, you'll end up with the same net result. You know, add one here, they add to get, you know, if you install another cap here, that capacitance will add with this capacitance. Or you can just leave that blank, take this trimmer cap out, and install a larger value. Same result, higher capacitance. Um, now I've been playing around with some tuning sticks. Um, they're made by ATC. They make uh, really high-end microwave capacitors. And I found that it looks like a 15 picofarad. So all, all these little tuning sticks are basically, eh, I'm not sure if they're fiberglass. Might be fiberglass. Anyhow, plastic or fiberglass sticks. They're non non reactive with electricity, basically. Um, but and I'll never get that to focus. Probably there. You can just see it. There's a little tiny capacitor in the end of that stick. Okay. And I don't know if I'll even be able to do this. <laughs> Try and slide the camera out of view. But I've got it. Uh. I've got that trimmer about centered, and that's what I was trying to find. I wanted to find a capacitor to install in here that will still keep my adjustment about center of range. So, you know, from the minimum minimum reading here to the maximum reading, you always want to try and keep your adjustment somewhere in the middle. So I've been playing around with different values, trying to find what value I need to add that will keep this trimmer capacitor in its center, center range, because as... The crystal ages and other components in this frequency counter module age. The frequency can go up or down. You want to be able to still have some adjustment range left in that trimmer capacitor. If you install too much or too little, you'll, you know, by the time you get it installed, you're already going to be at that limit. If it just drifts the tiniest bit, you're going to be out of range. So, like I said, you want to try and keep that centered. So, and this is very tricky getting this little critter in here. Like I say, trying to see, work around this camera here. Oh, I think I had it almost. Trying to get it touched in. What was that? Oh, there we go. So it's in circuit now. So you can see it's reading properly. 27. If I can get it held in there properly. 27.1850. So that's the capacitor value that I want to install. So let me pause the video. I'll come back this unhooked, get it on board, and I'll actually show you installing a surface mount cap in here. So give me a minute. Okay, so I've got her set up here in a little holding fixture. Um, now this is where it comes in handy, not just the holding fixture comes in handy, but it comes in handy to have stuff <laughs> like some of these capacitor kits or stuff like this, because of course you need a cap to stick in there. So having assortment kits is really nice. Um, honestly, I think for most people you don't need to be buying uh, the really big expensive kits like this. You know, this was a, is a DigiKey kit. Um, or, you know, stuff from like ATC, you know, RF microwave capacitors. Uh, nowadays, just go to eBay, quite honestly. Um, you can get cheap resistor and capacitor kits on eBay. Yes, they're made in China, and they usually ship from China. You can find them in the U.S., but they'll be cheaper if you get them straight from China. Honestly, they work just fine. Uh, all of you have to remember, all of the parts that are in this were probably made in China anyhow. So <laughs> you're just replacing, or, you know, either installing or replacing a component with a like component that shoot, may have come from the same factory. Um, you know, if you're working on higher end stuff, yeah, then you might want to be using stuff. But for, for stuff like this, yeah, just get, get yourself some of those cheap Chinese assortment kits. They'll be fine. You know, the, the one thing you do want to make sure is, and it's the capacitor I'm using in this, I'm using an NPO rated capacitor. Because this capacitor is in this oscillator circuit here, and it's, you know, its job is tuning that crystal's oscillating frequency. We want to make sure that that capacitor is very steady. It's actually sitting down here on the, uh, probably just out of view. It's right there. Um, we want to make sure that this capacitor, capacitor is very stable. So NPO capacitors are temperature compensating capacitors. So as this thing changes in frequency, or changes in temperature, because this thing does get hot, and it's part of the problem with these things, but the capacitance of this is very stable over a temperature range where other capacitors aren't. So enough jibber-jabbering. Let's get this little guy installed. Uh, try and get the camera... Get it all to the side here, maybe. Should be out of my way. 
little okay so I'm not going to use anything fancy no hot air nothing like that um, we'll just use some get my soldering iron up actually already on um, we're just going to use a normal soldering iron um, the tip may be you know different than what you're going to use but uh, just some desoldering braid because there's already solder on those pads so it's going to be hard to get this capacitor length flat on the board uh, just a little bit of I like to always use a, a gel flux so I'll add a little bit of flux there before I set the capacitor down on the board and then just some regular uh, now this is a tin lead solder composition but uh, just normal flux core solder and we'll get that little critter installed there so I want to take my desoldering braid and just come in here and clean up those two pads and remember with surface mount anytime you do something you want to be clean 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 because the parts are so small even the tiniest <laughs> basically speck of dust you know underneath of a component could cause a problem for you trying to solder in your new part. So, we'll take our capacitor. Actually, I need to put some flux on there first. And the flux will also help to kind of hold it in position just slightly. And don't worry if you put too much flux because, as I always say, Flux, flux, flux. You can never have too much flux. And there, like I say, you can see the gel flux kind of keeps it from moving around, where if you were using a liquid flux, it doesn't have any, vis basically, viscosity to it. The part can, it shifts around a little easier on you. So, let me get my solder here. clean off my soldering iron tip really well. Now the tip that I'm using, I'll show you real quick, is a it's a fine point and it's got a bend. If you can see that in the picture, yeah. That bent angle. That just is actually for ergonomics. You could uh, be perfectly fine using a straight tip. I just like these little bent tips because it allows me to hold the, the iron up off of the board a little bit more. But I want to get a little bit of solder actually on the soldering iron because remember we just cleaned all the solder off of the board so there's nothing on there right now. Uh, just turned around. The story of my life camera's always in the way. I want to just put light pressure down so it doesn't move on me. Okay, there's one side tacked in. from the other side here. Like I say, camera's always in my way. And then just reapply a little bit to that side and good. We'll come back in, clean the flux off. Isopropyl alcohol there on our swab. Though I could leave because this is a, you know, no, what they call no clean flux, but I still always like to clean my flux residue off. If for no other reason, I like to be able to inspect my solder joint to make sure I have a good connection, and it's kind of hard to do if everything is surrounded by flux residue. So, oh, just went a little bit too far. Come on, refocus. So, but that's where that's where. If you open one of these up, that's where you're going to find you'll need to add a capacitor. So if the frequency is too low, no, no matter how much you adjust this trimmer capacitor here, if you can't get the frequency to read high enough, so you know if you need 27.185, let's say if you're on channel 19, and the most you can get is you know 27.184 or something, what you need to do is is add a capacitor right there. Okay, that's that's where the empty hole is going to be. So you got the trimmer cap. There's going to be one out here towards the edge of the board, and this is the capacitor that is attached to the other leg of the crystal. Because, like I say, this is the crystal right here on the other side of the board. So add some capacitance right here. In this case, I added a 15 picofarad. Um, 
you'll need to play with that. That's the thing. That's where those little tuning sticks come in handy. You can just hold, you know, take basically, if you think of those as my tweezers, you can just take them, you know, touch the capacitor to the pads in circuit and see what the effect is. If it's not enough or too much, you just pick it, you know, a higher or lower value and you just touch the next one in. Um, you could do that if you had an assortment kit, you know, just take a, a capacitor, lay it on the board and push down on it. Well, obviously with something non-conductive like this with, you know, piece of plastic, but just hold it down on the board would serve the same purpose. It doesn't have to be attached necessarily to a stick. So let me get this reattached to the radio and we'll see how it turned out. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here it's hooked back up to the radio now and you can see the frequency is probably blinding the camera, the display, <laughs> but uh, it is reading correctly. And if we adjust the trimmer capacitor now, which would be your normal adjustment for this thing, you'll see I've got it about as centered as I can get. Because you've got to remember that uh, capacitors come in pretty much, you know, there's set step value and size. So I picked one that got the center of this trimmer capacitor closest, you know, um, if I had gone the next higher or lower value, I'd have been lopsided. Uh, right now it's within about two, uh, or two di two digits here of being centered. So if I so if you go down to about what 43, I keep turning, it goes back up. So it's seven low. And we can get as much as looks like five up. Oh, well, 56 gets six up. So okay, so we're within one digit of resolution of being able to get this trimmer capacitor centered. So like I say, that allows over time as this crystal over here on the other side ages, um, it still allows adjustment within this thing to compensate for that over time. So there you go. I don't want to make this video too extremely long. Whole point is, if you have one of these things, you're installing these in a non-ranger radio, you know, something like uh, Cobra or anything with a unit and chassis, which, you know, they cover in these little flyers that come with them, you know, where they're hooked up and whatnot. Um, now, the, the other thing you have to do on these, if you're using these, you know, like a model TR-296 or a Cobra 148. So pretty much anything that has that circuit board scheme. It could be a Cobra 2000, anything from Uniden that uses that a similar board. Uh, the one thing you do need to do is add a jumper. Um, now the customer had just installed a huge glob of solder and it looked like a little piece of wire in this thing. Um, I took that out since I had to take this module out to work on it anyhow and I added a zero ohm jumper resistor right there, which is what should be in <laughs> instead of a piece of wire. But uh, yeah, it tells you in the, in the manual here, short, short the two, pad, you know, two solder pads of JP1 on the main PCB. So uh, that's it. You need to increase the frequency. Now this does not work in the opposite direction. <laughs> This trimmer capacitor basically goes from 1 picofarad to 20 picofarad is, is its range. Um, if it doesn't have this second ceramic capacitor in here and your frequency is too high, adding capacitance there is just going to make it go even higher yet. There's really nothing you can do, <laughs> at least as far as these two caps go for swinging it the other way. But from what I've seen, uh, and actually had some other people comment about these things over over years, is that they usually read a little bit too low. This is the fix for it. Like I say, they they were kind enough to put a pad there to add add a capacitor. So that's that's it. Like I say, you can either add capacitance right there, or you can change this trimmer capacitor to a higher value. Uh, now. This is a 20 picofarad, and I just installed a 15 picofarad. So right now I have a total range that would go from between 16, because if we were to turn this down the whole way, that's going to be 1 picofarad plus 15 is 16, and then its maximum capacitance is going to be 15 plus 20, which is going to be 35. So if you were to stick in like a 35 or a 40 picofarad uh, trimmer capacitor here, would be just fine. You, like I say, you can either change that or just add extra capacitance. Uh, just remember, if you, ins if you install a higher value trimmer capacitor here, the higher you get in value, 
the coarser the tuning range is going to be as you're turning it. It's going to be harder and harder to try and get it right on, dead on the, fre the, the frequency that you want because it's so coarse. By adding a capacitor here, you're keeping the range of this capacitor the same. And you're just shifting where in the frequency range it's at. So there you go. I'm making it any longer than it already is. Hope that helps somebody out.